Hello and welcome back and that's right today we want to return to the rather hot and spicy subject of the Synology BST150 and the new B Station series and who's this next to me of course this is Luca over at Black Void arguably if you saw the previous video um he is the chap that pretty much found out all about this and he's dug very very deep and today we're going to talk about Ultimately, why we're actually quite excited and quite why we're feeling quite good about this new solution from Synology after a long period of time, where a lot of solutions, I think, have rolled out the gate with an element of compromise. But very quick, a few disclaimers straight off the bat. Number one, in the description are links to um, Luca's article over on Black Void that he's recently updated. We deliver more images and information about this product and, of course, BSM, B Station Manager. Secondly, um, just outside this building, just over there, there is absolutely loads of building work going on. And to try as I might for it, to not let me get angry and interrupt with the recording it may just get inside there in the background and I'm going to try my best not to smash everything on this table in sheer frustration but that rather negative aside Luca hello and welcome back to the channel I think it's your third time maybe your fourth um so the B, uh, B station the BST 150 over to you man let's let's talk well, thank you, Robbie. Thank you for having me again. Uh, yeah, uh, I do have to say another disclaimer that uh, none of the information were actually uh, provided by Synology or Synology employers. So this was uh, everything out in the open. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, just uh, a bit of uh, a bit of engineering to get into it, uh, into the into the details. Um, but yeah, uh, caught me by surprise. I have to say. I did had some last year some informations that some new type of device might be heading our way, but nothing as close as this. I mean, the fact that BSM is out there already mm -hmm. ready, uh, it, it just uh, goes to say that the uh, device is uh, up and running and um, probably uh, very soon. Mm. I mean, it looks like they wouldn't be rolling out uh, installation files for this new software, as well as all those registered yeah. trademarks and, indeed, a lot of the access portal stuff and the amount of information that's been out of Ghana about this, again, primarily mm. from your own, uh, like your side, um, has just, just been in, uh, insane. And, again, this video, we're going to try not to overrun to it because a lot of this is going to overlap stuff that's already in his article, um, the, the Nazca Bear article, which is basically the same article with about 10% more stuff in it, and the video that we did uh, a couple of days ago. But we're just going to talk about the main reasons we're happy about this product, but we're going to tailor at the end with a few things that we're slightly worried about, and I'm sure it's chapterized there at the bottom. But number one, I would say right now, and anyone that's been following this channel or storage for the better part of three to four years, um, one of the reasons that the BST-150, which again, we, I should have prefaced at the beginning is a single bay uh, plug and play solution from Synology. It's going to arrive pre-bundled with storage and is significantly easier to set up with a new version or a modified version of this station manager in the form of B station manager. Um, one of the things that I'm really glad about this is it's going to fill a gap in the market that's been developing for these uh, last few years. Um, when it comes to NAS, uh, things like, again, Synology, we can roll in QNAP, Asus, or Terra Master, and all those brands. They provide very fully featured solutions out there, but I don't think many users would say that they are the most user-friendly. And uh, in terms of initial setup, out-the-box, plug-and-play, not comparable to anything like a direct-attached storage device, but... During that time, there's always been solutions from brands and probably one of the biggest out there, WD, with their MyCloud series. The MyCloud series being a, a NAS that is a more simplified solution that is genuinely plug and play. You just turn it on, connect it to your router, go in via the web browser, you go into MyCloud dot whatever, go in, you enter the serial number and you're in. That's it. It's a, that's straightforward setup. This is Synology's version of that. It's a pre-bundled, um, ready-to-rock setup solution that genuinely you set up via the web browser in four pages. It's really, really insane, the simplicity of it. And I think, given that WD has not only been the last player in the market while everyone else has done, gone off and done other things, and that WD is slowly backing its way out of the NAS market because they know that their solution isn't evolved enough. I believe uh, Synology, uh, sorry, WD's My NAS OS is on version 5 or 6 and will probably reach end of life in the next 18 months and completely disappear in terms of support and features. This is a very good time for Synology to be rocking out an accessible, user-friendly, and genuine plug-and-play turnkey solution. And that's why I'm excited about it anyway. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree. I mean, you're obviously a lot more into different brands. I, I'm mm. definitely not on top of with uh, WD, but uh, I've had experience before with uh, my cloud series and whatnot. And uh, 
yeah, it, it, it was, I was never a customer for it. And uh, it was uh, uh, too restricted to, to um, you know, missing features and whatnot. But uh, building on the whole B thing, starting with the B drive, even a couple of months ago, well, uh, considering it was a, a simple USB device, right? Uh, the 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 fact that they uh, uh, on top of it they built a very decent uh, software solution that allows all the features. We're not going to go into that. Mm. And now uh, building on top of that with the B station, I think that BSM will definitely fill in that gap and go beyond what WD with my cloud had. So uh, yeah, mm. definitely market for it, and I can see a lot of people. Uh, going for it, mm. depending on how much it's going to cost. I think um, when when it comes to a lot of the the initial uh, presentation of say WD solution, which again we will try our best not to keep referring back to, it, but I think it's an incredibly mm. important comparison. WD pulling out of the market isn't because that market isn't there. It has always been there. Students, uh, low-level home users, people that don't want to learn about uh, network protocol and stuff like that. They want a very simplified storage solution that is their own cloud. Where WD failed is their same software, that NAS OS, extends to this little tiny one or two bay that's in some student's bedroom, some grotty little bed set, and it also extends to high-end rack mounts. It's effectively the same. It's just a simplified, very limiting storage solution that becomes overly complex, while simultaneously being very limited. It's incredibly annoying. Whereas Synology, of course, have had DSM for a number of years, and they're able to port the relevant parts from that into this, from what we're seeing. And indeed, in, um, in Luca's... Uh, uh, digging into BSM, he was able to find a number of the listed um, applications and services for this, some of which uh, confirmed that it is network and remote accessible, some of which multi, uh, confirming multimedia support, some of the backup support. I mean, some of the applications that you found on there, what were some of the standouts for you? Well, um, obviously, uh, Cloud Sync, uh, Drive, uh, Hyper Backup Support, and uh, Photos. So mm. I, I'm definitely seeing uh, B Station in. in um, uh, from from three main uh, elements that people will be able to use it from, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a, as a as a backup, uh, as a photo backup or mobile device backup through Photo Station, right? And then uh, with Cloud Sync and obviously Synology Drive, uh, again backup slash syncing, right? So mm -hmm. everything. I mean, top three um, DSM uh, applications were actually incorporated into BSM. And that's uh, just show, going to show uh, what the audience target is for for the B station, right? Uh, the CPU obviously on the on the NAS element supports uh, from uh, DSM 7.2 Dock, uh, mm, sorry Docker, Docker yeah. which will not be supported here. So they're basically just shaving off um, uh, applications which they don't want users to use, even though it is CPU capable, mm. and uh, basically just focusing on three four packages, not really sure whether or not we're actually going to see more. And uh, well, I would just like to uh, go back to what you said. Um, I mean, obviously me being as an Apple user, but Apple philosophy can be seen here, as you already stated. Ooh, yeah. You have NAS with DSM, you have routers with SRM, and now you have a completely new column of um, devices like BStation with BSM. So they're not actually following the philosophy of WD just having one OS and just uh, pushing it yeah. through to every single device. Yeah, so I definitely agree on that. I think um, I'm circling back to something I mentioned earlier about plug and play and, and quick setup. One of the main distinctions we're seeing here is I think even though Synology's DSM platform is tremendously user friendly, and unfortunately, people like you and I become quite native to a lot of the changes and what we might consider incredibly easy. Mm. Some people may be like, oh, what's that? I'm not certain. Setting up DSM, when you think about it, you buy the NAS, you've got to connect it to your router, uh, you've then got to get hard drives, you have a Synology or third party, um, then you put them inside, then you've got to set the device up for the first time, then you're invited to install the latest DSM on top of that, then you've got to go ahead and create accounts. From there, you have to go into the storage volume. And all of these things are what prevent it being plug and play. This does yeah. seem to be, it's got the drive inside. When you yeah. dug into the software, you recognized that um, there were profiles for the specific drive inside where everything mm -hmm. had been laid out in advance, which means that when you get this and you plug it in and connect it to the internet, presumably it will do a uh, firmware update check of its own volition, yeah. but it will yeah. be plug in, on, browser, done. And then More you enter the serial it. number. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. that is going to be a tremendous breath of fresh air to those that consider even Synology's products to still be something of an uphill 
um, step there. But another thing yeah. um, highlighting was about the Synology hard drives. Synology hard drives, uh, you know, love them or hate them. They've been around now, uh, hard drives or SSDs, uh, in one shape or form now for two and a half, I think coming up on three years, actually. And during mm -hmm. that time, they have their fans, they have their detractors, they have people that like them, people that think it's a terrible idea and it's changing the course of the brand. And of course, Synology's compatibility listings are something of a larger debate than we can do in this video. We've already done it several times. Yes. Um, but at the same time, this is the first solution that I will put my hand up and say justifies Synology's hard drives. All the other ones, there were cases to be made that could justify it, that justified it to some users, that explained the simplicity for some, but still at the same time didn't really meld in my mind with the change in the compatibility and support listings. This is the first product that I believe genuinely um, supports the use of Synology hard drives in my eyes because it is a turnkey solution much like a WD MyCloud with a WD drives inside or Seagate's Backup Plus remember that had Seagate drives it makes sense for this to use Synology yeah. branded tested firmware drives it does to me and yeah. it's just nice to be able to look at a Synology solution and go yeah 100% makes sense in terms of those yeah. drives yeah I definitely agree I think uh, uh, Synology with their I mean like you say, you either love it or hate it, right? Um, I have, uh, I think we already discussed that. My opinion is I have uh, no issues with them closing up, right? Mm -hmm. I love a closed ecosystem, but that's just me, okay? Mm -hmm. And obviously it makes sense, as you said, that they went with the enterprise hard drives first, right? That's where they can basically, mm -hmm. um, yeah, get their yeah. money back and uh, yeah, they can sell it and uh, enterprise won't even question that. Of course they want to, um, sort of a, a closed solution with everything is covered with warranty and whatnot. So, but that fine gap where enthusiasts were hit by that compatibility mm. list of drives, that's where all the, all the heat came out. And with the introduction of 3,300 uh, drives, uh, that has slightly changed in my opinion, because, uh -huh, okay, so you're not uh, gonna force hard drives from enterprise class uh, to us, right? Mm. And uh, with 3,300, that's actually what's happening now. And Obviously, 3300 will be part of B station, uh, uh, starting with a 40, uh, uh, four terabytes, sorry, drive. Uh, whether or not it's going to be a, a, a different model later on, we'll basically see. Mm. But yeah, it definitely makes sense, and I think this is actually where Synology has been going going towards to. And maybe this will happen on J on value series as well. Maybe it won't. Not really sure about that, but definitely we'll see. As long as they have the supply chain up and running and where, where we can get to the drives where we need it when, when they fail and whatnot, I have really no issues mm. with uh, with them pushing their own agenda, so to speak, right? But again, that's just me. Yeah. But with, um, with the drive, something I alluded to in my previous video towards the end is for the last few months, me and Eddie have been seeing uh, certain model IDs circling around in the back of compatibility lists, even locked mm -hmm. into uh, a couple of little patch updates we saw and even client tools. We started seeing a whole range of model IDs listed under the um, model ID DP, which we just kept saying to ourselves was either deep performance or deep uh, like petabyte type stuff, but we saw lots of stuff there with NVMe and SSD listings. We saw capacities, I believe, up to 126 TB being listed there. Now, whether that was just a working prototype name before they settled on B Station, and these are all part mm. of that, or that the mm -hmm. B Station series, which no doubt will excel beyond just this one model and deviate into other capacities, you know, perhaps there'll be RAID functionality in those larger ones. Um, yeah. Again, from digging into those files of the uh, .pat file for that firmware update, there was icons for 1, 2, 4, and 8 TB, but that could allude to another third-party system it's connected to. Um, but... Just again, these solutions like this just feel to me like they justify more of that Synology going into storage because of the whole convenience angle. There are two yep. ways, as you say, to look at that storage, either full on enterprise, Johnny Big Bananas, EMC, hyperscale. And then at the bottom, it's like, just give me a thing that works. And it makes yep. sense within those two worlds. But the other thing, you know, even that falls, I would argue, within the remit of that, and this, you know, is on the supposition that the um bst 150 isn't just a one-off it's going to deviate into different solutions within that portfolio mm -hmm. and indeed if there is larger versions under this dp banner whatever that is um the, this is going to simplify and improve and make easier three to one backup strategies three you know three copies two locations you know uh, but obviously the rules have changed in my time but 
that idea that you could literally have this plug and play system that um, will set up very, very quickly has almost remote access built into it out the gate mm. and having hyper backup and Synology drive rolled into it as well opens the door quite significantly to this being a very, very quick and convenient additional backup option in a way right now that even if you stay within the Synology ecosystem and I have a, a DS920 plus here, peace out, miss you buddy. And over there in someone else's house, a buddy backup, you've got another NAS and it's a Synology as well, a DS423 or something. Those two NASs, it is still not especially user-friendly, to synchronize them. It still requires some protocols and backup if you're going from an RT, RR, even if you simplify it within Hyper Backup and use Synology's own presets, it's still not very streamlined in a way that this would be. So I think another reason I'm quite pleased about this is whether you are going to go into the gutter ball tier at uh, the entry point, again, the student you bed sick, you know, needs some storage mm. for his dissertation, which is growing out of control, this is something that could actually appeal to some of those small, medium business tiers if it gets to a larger scale for a much easier bolt-on for that three-to-one backup strategy evolution as they move forward. I was actually trying to, while I was digging through the files, uh, I was actually trying to see whether or not there is uh, um, information what element of hyper backup will be supported on this device because you're, you're mentioning three-to-one and I can definitely see this as a one right b station mm. being the one somewhere off you know in, in someone mm. else's closet uh, but i'm not really sure uh depending how the portal will work and from that screenshot that we see on the laptop um not really sure whether or not uh hyper backup on b station will be um considered as a target right uh. i'm i'm guessing it uh, will be from my understanding the way i see it it will be a client. You'll be able to obviously back up to uh, a NAS, a DSM. Uh, there are reference to C2. So C2, obviously, I mean, it will be ludicrous yeah, yeah, not yeah. To, to try and sell the cloud storage, right? Mm. But not really sure whether or not it's actually going to be a potential target. Uh, so you can actually target your NAS from, from DSM and say, look, back up to my uh, DSM. Mm. That will be great. I think it will be great. But... I, I, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. Mm. I mean, moving uh, slightly forward, uh, and fingers crossed they actually do crack on with that. Another thing that I quite like about it, uh, this, and again, I know it seems like I'm gushing. Don't worry, guys. We're going to go through some negatives in a bit so you can sit tight and get, you know, get some popcorn on the go. But another thing about this device that I like in terms of, and you highlighted this earlier when you were talking about the Apple model and comparisons to which we all make when we talk about Synology. I think this is going to clean up the portfolio for new guys like myself i'm very aware of synology's portfolio and how some things come and go i'm used to i monitor it a lot more professionally so i am not the atypical user here but someone coming in that doesn't know what uh, the difference between an entry level device is one they look at ah oh, ds124 ah oh, ds223 ah oh, ds2 uh, is it just one bay of difference and it it's uh, oversaturated. I did a video recently, a buyer's guide uh, coming out soon. It's been really infuriating me for other reasons. And that buyer's guide I did, I made that video because although at the moment I believe there is um, 36 solutions listed on their website, they've released something like 351 solutions in the last 20 years. And it's just a lot of solutions that they've rolled out. Now, what I like about the idea of the B Station series and this VST 150 and everything that could potentially follow, and a lot of those uh, solutions I talked about earlier on with the DP, is that allows them to simplify their portfolio between home, between business, and enterprise there. Now, there'll be crossover, of course, you know, bigger business, high capacity, prosumer, fully featured. But this will really clean things up, I hope in mm -hmm. terms of their portfolio to a new visiting user. Do you think it's uh, actually going to cannibalize some series as well? Well, there we go. We're going into the negatives. Uh, <laughs> let's crack straight on with the negatives. And number one, of course, I've got it there in my big old notes, death of J and value. Because let's be honest, as positive as we would like to be, you are bang on the banana. Um, this would spell the death of the J and value series. I, I don't think there's any room for argument, right? Well, um, the, the, the reason why I'm asking, because it kind of crossed my mind, and um, from my point of view, Jay 
might be in trouble, but not really sure value is. Mm. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because they've increased um, application compatibility on some of the values. So I think they're kind of here to stay. So J, yeah, I can definitely see 123J, yeah, yeah, just, you know, getting shot off. Yeah. But value, I'm not, not not quite sure on the value. Yeah, it you're depends right. on the price of the B station as well, I think. Mm, and the inclusive style. I mean, again, you're right. When they rolled in things like improvements within DSM, uh, the BTRF support, uh, I'm not sure if BTRF is now available at one gig. I know containers are in the container manager. And you're right, they have been really tweaking and improving things. Even that 223 when we had it in the test area, yeah. given it as two gig of fixed memory, it still did an incredible job. But I just... I do think this is going to spell the death of the J series and it will eliminate the J and it ultimately the value series will sort of in all but name become the J series because it's the mm -hmm. it will be the empty unpopulated model whereas all of these will be populated. Um moving forward to other negatives, uh potential negatives I should say TBC. Um drive swapping. Um uh, when you were doing your dig it in when you were doing your digging into uh, that firmware and then again, Eddie went through it afterwards, but frankly, you made his efforts redundant for the most part, um, that the, all of the firmware pointed at specifically an HAT 3300-4TB drive. It, mm -hmm. This firmware is not designed, as you highlighted, it's a 500 gig install when DSM is normally 3350 because yeah. of all the extra apps and config for it to mm -hmm. be ready to go. And the, the idea there is, wait a minute, so does this mean it has to only use Synology drives? If I put in a third party, is yeah. there the potential for the system to go, nope, I'm not no. going, you know? Yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to uh, be excited to see what's going to happen. I mean, from that one concept video of the model, we can't actually see whether or not you can open it, uh, mm -hmm. whether or not you can conveniently exchange the drive or, or it's going to be a one-off, right? You're going to have to break the unit in order mm -hmm. to get to the drive. So... Uh, but I think Synology is definitely going to go Synology drives and nothing else. That's my opinion, mm. basically. Uh, I haven't actually posted any information on the compatibility of the drive because there are some elements there from the enterprise range as well. Uh, maybe that's not even the, the yeah. cleanup done well, or maybe just they just left it. So I, I didn't want to, you know, yeah. stir the water. It wouldn't be anything, fair, but, yeah. 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 But, I mean, when you mentioned, like, with the drives, I mean, I'm still running on the assumption that this will potentially turn into a two- and four-bay series. Again, mm -hmm. whether it's that DP development name or something that comes out, I'm sure in a month or so, when someone as you do their big guns blazing um, annual event, we'll find out more. But the just the very idea that this will be locked into only their own drives, and obviously the one-bay hot swapping isn't going to be a thing, so if there is no tray or that little panel at the top presses it and removes it, I can understand why they wouldn't allow the facility to remove the drives in that. If I was getting a four-bay device, however, I want to be able to remove that drive conveniently for the sake of a degraded raid and rebuild. But yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about if this is locked into their drives, because clearly it's not going to be rolling out unpopulated. That firmware is built on the system having a drive to store this information during yeah. the firmware installation. Uh, and the other thing, we talk about um, firmware installation and what's included, apps. You alluded to it earlier on. Is there going to be the capacity to add further apps, or are you going to be locked in to either only the apps they include or an exceptionally limited app center like you find on Synology's router management software. When you yeah, go on their I, routers, I, yeah, what yeah, is there like yeah. six apps? Yeah, exactly. I think I think we're initially for the foreseeable future, I see it as an SRM situation. They're gonna be like five, six apps. Probably some of the functionalities again that we can see from that screenshot. Um, the the B admin center as they call it will have uh, certain functionalities which are coming from uh, cloud sync from drive and whatnot. So they might uh, reference the application uh, such as drive, such as photos in there just to install it. But presentation might be completely different from what we're actually used to. It, it, it will probably be incorporated inside the, the new BSM mm. operating system. And whether or not we're actually going to see the app center there or packet center, whatever, um, remains to be seen. Yeah, mm. not really sure. And my, my final point here, and this one I would argue, even if it was true, and this is probably one of the most hypothetical things on my list, the one that I think, I'm not going to say is, you know, I will say, I think it's the least likely, but we can't discount it. Does This could potentially spell the changing of the things to come. Synology start integrating their own hard drives, they then start rolling out bundled solutions. 
and you know first they came for the j series and then they <laughs> came for the plus it like I don't think it would be impossible to see if this is successful, them not potentially, TBC, etc., rolling this up further down the chain. Because yeah. it was very clear, uh, not not uh, not too different solution uh, way they went with the Enterprise Hyperscale series, where they rolled out from, what, 2021? XS, mm. SA series and more, all of them having, you must use Synology drives, and yeah. going down that road of the compatibility listings, and then kind of starting to... They didn't really lock out functionality, but we started seeing... They'd always done it on the memory, but they did it on PCIe upgrades. And that same methodology towards that top tier, which has now become the status quo every time I recommend a solution. Um, well, now we're looking at that lower tier. They could see this as a much more convenient way to clean up their portfolio and their internal maintenance and you know system handling if you know this works out with the B station and then go, well, we could extend this logic to the disk station and then all of yeah. a sudden you have a four bay that either arrives pre-bundled and you don't have a choice which would be awful in this marketplace in my opinion or you know again hypothetically a solution that rolls out in a much more fixed um dsm bsm state and i hope they don't give people the choice of either one of them because qnap did that and it is very messy with yeah. their qts quts and again as i say this is the most hypothetical of all of the ones i'm talking about the one that i think is probably the most unlikely but I can't say zero percent. I just can't. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I definitely agree with you. And um, uh, maybe uh, some people are not aware. Uh, the um, Unified Controller series has its own DSM as well, mm. right? So it's actually not uh, using the, the the default DSM. And uh, obviously, uh, Synology has uh, no problem uh, creating a new operating system for specific device type, as, as obviously we can see now. And um, regarding uh, further cannibalization and further uh, closing the platform, what, what you were talking about just now, um, maybe it will happen. But if it happens, uh, they need more drives, more SSDs, mm -hmm. more NVMEs for the prosumer, for the, the Soho uh, element. And then they can say, look, just our drives or nothing. Then they mm. can sell it as a pure appliance, right? But they have to fill in all the gaps that people want, right? The NVMe, the the SATA uh, two and a half S SSDs, and obviously what they did with the uh, uh, hard drives, the, the 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 physical hard drives mm. with the thirty three hundred, right? And only then. So, are we on that trajectory? Maybe. Uh, time will tell. I don't know. I was slightly cynical when I first saw a lot of the information <laughs> about the storage. I was sat there going. That would explain why they use that ancient Intel CPU just to sort of use up stock. And then my brain started circling. But this is not the place for tin pot theories and, <laughs> you know, tin foil hats. But thank you so much for joining us again on the channel, um, Luca. Again, thank his article much. is linked below. He's updating a lot on this. I'm sure there's going to be even more information on that down the line. There's a link to the previous video to find out more about this and other links and articles too. But apart from that, again, stay tuned with the rest of us for in about a month, month and a bit. No doubt Synology will roll out their annual event. Um, so we'll be talking about that more. And I'm sure they'll release the cover from this and show more on this device but otherwise thanks again for joining us on the channel luca again Thank links you. to uh, black void below and those articles as well as some stuff on those compares but apart from that have yourselves a fantastic week hope it's not raining where you are um, and we'll see you next time <laughs>